Hi and welcome to my latest video. I have a series of questions 1 to 12 and I would like you to attempt these questions. All you need to do is pause the video and answer them. Question 1. Find the nth term of this quadratic sequence, 0, 3, 12, 27, 48. When writing your final answer, the quadratic sequence should be written in this form. a n squared plus b n plus c. To find the value of a, what we need to do first is to find the first difference and then the second difference. Once we have identified the second difference, we can divide the second difference by 2. So let me just write the question out over here. 0, 3, 12, 27, and 48. We need to find the first difference. So the difference between 3 and 0 is 3. 12 and 3 is 9. 27 and 12 is 15. 48 and 27 is 21. Now we need to find the second difference. SD. Difference between 9 and 3 is 6. 15 and 9 is 6 again. And 21 and 15 is 6. The second difference is 6. To find the value of A, we need to divide 6 by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Therefore, the value of A is 3. Now I'm going to construct a table to find the value of B and C. The first row is the nth terms, so n, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The second row is the sequence, so we have 0, 3, 12, 27, and 48. The third row is 3n squared, 3n squared. So 1 squared is 1 times by 3, which is 3. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. 3 squared is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. 4 squared is 16, 16 times 3 is 48. 5 squared is 25, 25 times 3 is 75. Now I need to find the difference. So it's sequence minus 3 and squared. 0 minus 3 is minus 3. 3 minus 12 is minus 9. 12 minus 27 is minus 15. 27 minus 48 minus 21. 48 minus 75 is minus 27. The difference row is now a linear sequence. So the value of b is the difference between minus 9 and minus 3. Difference between minus 9 and minus 3 is minus 6. Minus 15 and minus 9 is minus 6. Difference between minus 21 and minus 15 is minus 6. The difference between minus 27 and minus 21 is minus 6. Therefore, the value of b is minus 6. Now, as I said to you before, the difference row is in the form of a linear sequence. And we know that b is equal to minus 6. So it can be written as minus 6n 
plus c. Now if you look carefully at this table, when n equals 1, the difference is minus 3. So I'm going to substitute 1 into this equation. So minus 6 times 1 plus c. So minus 6 times 1 is minus 6. What do I need to add to minus 6 to give us minus 3? Well, the answer is 3. So therefore, c is equal to 3. Therefore, our answer can be written as 3n squared minus 6n plus 3. And that's our final answer. Question 2. f of x equals x plus 2. g of x equals x minus 5. Find 2a, f compose f of 4, 2b, g compose g of 3, 2c, g compose f of 4. So the first thing I need to do is write the function f of x down. f of x is equal to x plus 2. Now 2a states f compose f of 4. So the first thing I need to do is substitute 4 into the function f of x. So f of 4 is equal to 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now I need to substitute my previous answer into the function f of x again. So f of 6 is equal to 6 plus 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. And that's our answer for 2a. 2b. G compose G of 3. Again, I'm going to write the function G of X down. So G of X is equal to X minus 5. So I'm going to substitute the value of 3 into the function G of X. So G of 3 is equal to 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is minus 2. So again, I'm going to substitute my previous answer, which is minus 2, back into the function g of x. So we should have g of minus 2 is equal to minus 2 minus 5. Minus 2 minus 5 is minus 7. And that's our answer for 2b. 2c. G compose f of 4. Again, we're going to start off with the function f of x. So f of x is equal to x plus 2. I'm going to substitute the value of 4 into the function f of x. So f of 4 is equal to 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now I'm going to substitute my previous answer into the function g of x. So g of x is equal to x minus 5. So g of 6 is 6 minus 5. Therefore our answer is 6 minus 5 which is 1. And that's my previous and that's my answer. Question 3 involves finding the inverse function of f of x. 3a, f of x is equal to 5x squared plus 6 over 4. 3b, f of x is equal to 5x minus 4 over 6x plus 4. I'm going to start at 3a. I'm going to write the question out. So f of x is equal to 5x squared plus 6 over 4. Now at this point I'm going to replace the notation f of x with y. So we should have y is equal to 5x squared plus 6 over 4. Now to find the inverse function I'm going to make x a subject. To make x a subject I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So we should have 4y is equal to 5x squared plus 6. Now I'm going to subtract both sides by negative 6. 
So what we should have now, it's going to minus 6 over here, minus 6 over here. 4y minus 6 is equal to 5x squared. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So we should have 4y minus 6 over 5 is equal to x squared. And then I'm going to take the square root from both sides. So we should have square root 4y minus 6 over 5 is equal to x. Now I'm going to rearrange the equation to make the subject x on the left hand side. So we should have x is equal to square root 4y minus 6 over 5. Once you make x the subject, you can change the notations around so that x now is the inverse function of f of x and y is equal to x. So we should have the inverse function of f of x is equal to the square root of 4x minus 6 over 5. And that's our answer for 3a. So 3b, we need to find the inverse function of f of x. So we have f of x is equal to 5x minus 4 over 6x plus 4. To find the inverse function, we're going to change the notations around. So f of x now becomes y. So we should have y is equal to 5x minus 4 over 6x plus 4. Now I'm going to rearrange this equation to make x the subject. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 6x plus 4. So we should have y is equal to 6x plus 4 is equal to 5x minus 4. Then I'm going to expand the bracket so we should have 6xy plus 4y is equal to 5 x minus 4. And then going to subtract 5x from both sides. So that cancels out. So what we should have now is 6xy minus 5x plus 4y equals minus 4. And I'm then going to subtract 4y from both sides. Therefore, we should have 6xy minus 5x is equal to minus 4 minus 4y. I'm then going to take the common variable, which is x, out and factorize it. So x, open brackets, 6y minus 5, close brackets, is equal to minus 4 minus 4y. I'm then going to divide both sides by 6y minus 5. So we should have x equals minus 4 minus 4y over 6y minus 5. At this point, I'm going to change the notations around. So x now becomes the inverse function of f of x, and y becomes x. So what we should have now is the inverse function of f of x is equal to minus 4 minus 4x over 6x minus 5. And that's our final answer. So the first thing we need to do when we need to calculate the angle of a non-right angle triangle is to label the sides A, B, and C. Now I'm just going to label the sides. This is A, as it's opposite the angle that we need to calculate. This is B, and this is C. Now I'm going to be using the cosine rule. The equation of the cosine rule is A squared equals B squared plus C squared 
minus 2bc cos theta. I'm going to substitute the values of a, b and c into this equation. So a is 11, so it would be 11 squared. b is 4, so it would be 4 squared. c is 9, so it would be 9 squared. And it will be minus 2 times 4 times 9 times cos theta. 11 squared is 121. So 121 equals 16 plus 81 minus 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 times 9, which is 72. 72 cos theta. I'm going to simplify it further by adding 16 plus 81, which is 97. So we have 221 plus 97 minus 72 cos theta. I'm now going to subtract 97 from both sides. So what we should have is minus 97 over here, minus 97. So 121 minus 97 is 24 is equal to negative 72 cos theta. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative 72. So divide this side by negative 72 and this side by negative 72. So what we have now is negative a third equals cos theta. I'm now going to be using the inverse function of cos, which is cos raised to the power of negative 1. Therefore, theta is equal to cos raised to the power of negative 1, open bracket, minus 1 third. Therefore, our answer is theta is equal to 109.47122206. Going to round this up to one decimal place, which is 109.51 dp. And that's your final answer. So the first thing I'm going to do is label each of my columns. So this is midpoint. And this is frequency, times, midpoint. Now the next step is to find the midpoint between the group data. So 12 and 14 is 13. 14 and 16 is 15. 16 and 18 is 17. 18 and 20 is 19. Now the next step is to multiply the midpoint by the frequency. So we have 5 multiplied by 13, which gives us 65. We have 20 times 15, which gives us 300. We have 10 multiplied by 17, which gives us 170. And we have 5 multiplied by 19, which gives us 95. I'm then going to find the summation of the frequency times the midpoint. So I'm going to add 65 plus 300 plus 170 plus 95, which gives us a grand total of 630. I'm then going to add the total frequencies together. 5 plus 20 plus 10 plus 5 gives us 40. 
Now to find the mean, we're going to be using this general equation. The mean is equal to the summation of the frequency times the midpoint divided by the total frequency. So in this case, we have the summation of frequency times the midpoint, which is 630. So 630 divided by 40. Therefore, the mean is equal to 15.75. And that's our final answer. Question six, find the values of y and x. So the first thing we need to do when we need to calculate the angle of a non-right angle triangle is to label the sides A, B and C. Side A can be found as is always opposite the angle that we need to calculate. The other two sides can either be B or C, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to label it. So I want to find this particular angle. Therefore, this side is A and this side's B, and this side's C. So the cosine equation is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos theta. Now I'm going to substitute the values of A, B, and C into the equation. So A is equal to A point three squared equals six point six squared plus seven point five squared minus two times six point six times seven point five cos theta eight point three squared is equal to 68.89 6.6 squared is equal to 43.56 plus 7.5 squared is 56.25 minus 2 times 6.6 .6 times 7.5 which is 99 cos theta. I'm going to simplify it further. So we have 68.89 equals 99.81 minus 99 cos theta. I'm going to subtract 99.81 from both sides. Therefore, what we're left with is minus 30.92 equals minus 99 cos theta. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative 99. So what we're left with is 700 and 75 over 2475 equals cos theta. Now I'm going to take the inverse of cos to find out the value of theta. So theta is equal to inverse of cos. So cos raised to the power of 1. Sorry, cos raised to the power of negative 1. 775 over 2,475. Therefore, the value of theta is equal to 71.8007483. Going to round it to one dp. Theta is equal to 71.8, 1 dp. 
Now I'm going to be using the sine rule to work out the angle of y. So the sine rule states sine a over a is equal to sine b over b. Now the angle of a is 71.8 and I'm going to substitute into this equation and the length of a is equal to 8.3. So what we should have is sine 71.8 over 8.3 equals sine b. So this is the angle that we want to find out over side b which is 7.5. So what we need to do next is to use our calculator and type sine 71.8 divided by 8.3. Then we're going to multiply both sides by 7.5. So what we should have is sine b is equal to 0 0.858408. 4803. Again, to find b, we're going to do the inverse function of sine. So b is equal to sine raised to the power of negative 1, open bracket 0 0.858408408803. Therefore, b should be equal to. 59.1385405. Go round it to one decimal place, so it's 59.1. 1D P. And that's our final answer. So question seven involves expanding the following brackets. We have x plus one, x plus two x plus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply these two brackets first. So we have x plus 1, x plus 2. So x times x, which is x squared. x times 2, which is 2x. 1 times x is 1x. 1 times 2 is 2. I'm going to simplify it further. So x squared plus 3x plus 2. I'm going to put this in brackets and then I'm going to bring down x plus 2 and position it over here. I'm then going to expand these two brackets x squared plus 3x plus 2 and x plus 2. So we have x squared times x which is x cubed x squared times 2, which is 2x squared. 3x times x, which is 3x squared. 3x times 2, which is 6x. 2 times x, which is 2x. And 2 times 2, which is 4. I'm then going to simplify it further by collecting like for like terms. So we have x cubed plus 5x squared plus 8x plus 4. And that's our final answer. Question 8. Complete the square and find the turning point. x squared plus 6x minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is to equate this quadratic equation to zero. So we have x squared plus 6x minus 2 equals zero. I'm now going to add 2 to both sides. So plus 2, plus 2. So what we have now is x squared plus 6x here I'm just going to underline the value plus 2 plus a value that we're going to underline. 
To find the underlying value, what we need to do is first of all, divide the B coefficient by two and then square it. So six divided by two, which is three, and then we're going to square three, which is nine. So nine goes over here and nine goes over here. X squared plus six X plus nine forms a perfect square and therefore can be rewritten as open bracket x plus 3 close bracket raised to the power of 2 which is equal to 11. I'm then going to subtract 11 from both sides so I can equate the equation to 0. So minus 11 goes over here. 11 minus 11 equals 0 cancels out. E minus 11 over here. So what we should have now is open bracket x plus 3 close bracket raised to the power of 2 minus 11 equals 0. Therefore our turning point is minus 3 and minus 11. Question 9. Solve for the values of x x squared plus 6x plus 3 equals 0. Now to solve for the values of x we're going to be using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now we need to identify the values of a, b and c. So in this example the value of a is equal to 1, the value of b is equal to 6, the value of c is equal to 3. So all I'm going to be doing now is substituting these values into this equation. So what we should have is minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 open brackets 1 close brackets open brackets 3 close brackets over 2 open brackets 1 close bracket. So I'm going to simplify it further. So we have negative 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 12 over 2. Again I'm going to simplify it further so minus 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 12 is 24 over 2. I'm going to simplify the third square root 24 even further so we should have square root 24 is equal to square root 2 times square root 12 square root 12 is equal to square root 24 therefore the square root 24 can be written as minus 6 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 2. I'm going to simplify this further by dividing minus 6 by 2 and 2 root 6 by 2. So what we should have oops, is minus 3 plus or minus root 6. So our answer is x is equal to minus 3 plus root 6 or x equals root 3 minus root 6. Question 10 involves finding the values of x and y. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to label the top equation equation number 1 and the bottom equation equation number 2. So top one equation number one and the bottom one equation number two. Now I'm going to substitute equation number two into equation number one. Therefore what we should have is x open bracket 
3x minus 3, close bracket, equals 18. I'm then going to expand the bracket. So x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 3 is minus 3x equals 18. I'm then going to be equating this equation to 0 by subtracting 18 from both sides. So minus 18 on this side and minus 18 on this side. Positive 18 minus 18 gives us 0. So what we should have 0 on this side and 3x squared minus 3x minus 18. Now I can factorize this quadratic equation. I'm going to put it in brackets. So we have open bracket x x uh, minus and a positive. So this should be minus 3 and this should be 2. Therefore our values of x are 3 or minus 2. Now I'm going to be finding the values of y by substituting the values of x into equation 2. Equation 2 was y is equal to 3x minus 3. So when x is equal to 3, let x equals 3. I'm going to, be, I'm going to substitute into this equation. So y is equal to open brackets 3 times 3, close bracket, minus 3, 3 times 3 is 9, minus the 3 is 6. Therefore, when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 6. So we have 3 and 6. Again, I'm going to be following the same procedures, but this time x is going to be equal to negative 2. So let x equals negative 2. So we have y is equal to open brackets 3 times negative 2 close bracket minus 3. 3 times negative 2 is minus 6. Minus 6 minus 3 is minus 9. So therefore y is equal to minus 9. So our answer is minus 2 minus 9. Question 11. Find the value of b. So we have b plus 10 over 6 equals b plus 9 over 9. So I'm now going to cross multiply. I'm going to multiply this side by 9 and this side by 6. So we should have 9 open bracket b plus 10 close bracket equals 6 open bracket b plus 9 close bracket. I'm then going to expand the brackets so 9 times b which is 9b, 9 times 10 which is 90, 6 times b which is 6b and 6 times 9 which is 54. I'm then going to be subtracting 6b from both sides so minus 6b from this side and minus 6b from this side. 6b minus 6b equals 0, so it cancels out. And whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. So 9b minus 6b is 3b plus 90 equals 54. My next step is to subtract 90 from both sides. So minus 90 over here. And minus 90 over here. Positive 90 minus 90 equals 0 so that cancels out and 54 minus 90 is equal to negative 36 so let me just write that down. So you have 3b is equal to negative 36. I'm then going to divide 3 from both sides so we should have Divide 3 here, 3 here. So b is equal to negative 
12, and that's our final answer. Question 12. Find the values of x and y. 2x plus 5y equals 35. 3x plus 4y equals 35. First thing I'm going to do is to label the top equation, equation number 1, and the bottom equation, equation number 2. So, equation number 1 and equation number 2. Now, it's completely entirely up to you which variable you want to eliminate, either x or y. I'm going to eliminate y. Therefore, I need to make the y variable the same. To do this, I'm going to multiply the top equation, equation number 1, by 4, and the bottom equation, equation number 2, by 5. So, 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 5y is 20y. 4 times 35 is equal to 140. 5 times 3x is 15x. 5 times 4y is 20y. 5 times 35 is 175. I'm now going to subtract both equations. So minus over here. 8x minus 15x is minus 7x. 20y minus 20y is 0 equals 140 minus 175 is minus 35. Going to divide both sides by minus 7. Therefore, x is equal to 5. I'm now going to substitute the value of x. In this case, x equals 5 into equation 1 to find the value of y. So, what we should have is 2 open brackets 5 close brackets plus 5y equals 35. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 5y equals 35. 35. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. 10 minus 10 is 0, cancels out. We have 5y over here. 35 minus 10 is 25. I'm then going to divide both sides by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 25 divided by 5 is 5, so therefore y is equal to 5. Our answer is 5 and 5, so that's the final answer.